Okay, this is chapter eight. Uh, the learning objectives include uh, calculating for the percent of markup based on cost and the percent of markup based on selling price. Also calculating for markups and uh, markdowns and uh, break-even analysis. Uh, first of all, whenever uh, we, we start talking about markups and markdowns, any company's main objective is to make money, uh, to um, uh, mark up merchandise, mark down merchandise depending upon uh, perishables and those types of things, and still get a little bit of um, a residual income and hopefully a profit even from the markdowns. We need to look at a couple of um, definitions. The first one is selling price. Uh, selling price means this is the price retailers charge the, the customer. The total selling price of all the goods sold by a retailer, for example, like Gap, represents a retailer's total sales. The cost, this is the price retailers pay to a manufacturer or to a supplier to bring the goods into the store. The markup, the margin, or the gross profit, those three terms refer to the differences between the cost of bringing the goods into the store and the selling price of those goods. Then the operating expenses or overhead, these are the regular expenses of, of doing business such as the wages, the rent, utilities, insurance, advertising, and so on. Net profit and net income, this is the profit remaining after subtracting the cost of bringing the goods into the store and the operating expenses uh, from the, uh, the sale of the goods including returns or adjustments. So we're going to look, first of all, in this particular uh, unit, we're going to look at the percent of markup based upon cost and the percent of markup based upon selling price. Now generally, we uh, will use a percent of markup based upon uh, cost um, we'll, we'll use a percent of markup based on cost uh, when we are uh, many fan okay, many manufacturers mark up goods on cost because manufacturers can get cost information more easily than they can with sales information. Some retailers have the chance uh, choice of uh, using percent of markup on cost or selling price. In this unit, we assume that Gap has uh, chosen a percent of markup on cost, and then in the second uh, unit, we'll assume that Gap will uh, determine markup based upon selling price. Um, businesses that uh, use a percent of markup on cost recognize that cost is 100%. Therefore, 100% uh, represents the base of the portion formula. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take a look at a couple of examples in the chapter. And the first one is, uh, let's, let's make this particular assumption. Let's assume that uh, hooded fleece jackets cost um, $18. Okay, and then we'll also make the assumption that uh, uh, the selling price of this jacket is $23. Okay, so there's the assumptions that we're going to go ahead and uh, so uh, the hooded fleece jacket costs $18 and then the selling price of this jacket is $23. We're going to use a formula that I'm going to set up just very similar to that of tic-tac-toe. Here's the, uh, the formula itself, the tic-tac-toe, and in the middle is CMS. Okay, um, to the left of the CMS, the cost plus markup is equal to selling price. We're going to make these values percentages. And to the right of the CMS, we're going to make those values dollar amounts. Okay, we're going to start by filling in the blanks. And if we know that the percent of markup is based upon cost, then we're going to make cost 100% and cost becomes the base. Okay. Now the next thing is that the cost of that hooded fleece jacket is $18. And we're gonna sell it for $23. So we have three items that are in our tic-tac-toe calculation. So now we're actually ready to make a calculation. The rule is you go to the first place that you can add or take the difference. 
Well, that leads us to the right-hand side and the difference between 18 and 23. The cost is supposed to, uh, plus your markup will equal your selling price. So the difference between the cost and the selling price is only $5. The first place that you go to add or take the difference, that will become your part if it's on the right-hand side. And then you'll go straight to the left and then we'll be solving for the rate. Okay. Now, as, notice the, the components of this particular problem. The base is associated with the cost, which is 100%, and it's on a row all by itself. The part and the rate are on a row all by themselves. Okay, I went to the first place I could add or take the difference, which is a $5, so I made that the part, and then I went straight left and made that the rate, and that's the only value that's left empty between the base part and the rate. So rate is equal to part divided by base, so part is 5 divided by the, uh, the base of 18. And uh, calculating that out, 5 divided by 18 is equal to 0.277777778. So I'm going to move the decimal point two places to the right and uh, round it to the nearest hundredth to make it 27.78. Okay, and then I'll just fill in the rest of the tic-tac-toe. 100 plus 27.78 is 127.78%. Okay, so really what you have learned from this particular calculation is uh, we have a fleece, hooded fleece jacket that costs $18. We marked it up $5 to sell it for $23. The percent of markup is based on... Uh, the percent of markup on this particular fleece jacket is 27.78%. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at another problem. Um, this next problem is we have a lamp that costs $100. I'll put that one right here. And uh, the percent of markup on cost is 65%. Okay, so there's our legend right there. Uh, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do a, um, a CMS. And since the percent of markup is based on cost, I'm going to make cost 100%. And cost is your base. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill in the blanks. I have the cost of the, uh, the lamp of $100. I'll position it right here for the cost. And then the percent of markup based on cost is 65%. Here's a markup, and to the left, I'm going to position 65% right there. Okay. Okay, now I have three items, so I'm ready to uh, calculate uh, this tic-tac-toe method. And uh, I go to the first place I can add or take the difference. This time it's on the left-hand side. I can add 100 to the percent of markup on cost of 65% to give us 165%. I'll make that the rate, and then I'll go straight across, and I want to make this a part. Okay, so I have only one value uh, to calculate for, and that's the part. And so the part is equal to base times rate. So it's $100 times the, uh, the rate of 1.65 after I move that decimal point two places to the left. Therefore, uh, $100 times 1.65 is equal to $165. And then the difference between the, uh, the cost and the selling price is just $65. Okay, so what we've learned on this one is that um, the lamp costs 100 bucks and there's a percent uh, of markup based upon cost of 65%. So therefore, the cost of this lamp is $165, so we only marked it up $65.
Okay, let's look at a, a third item. And uh, let's make this one a selling price of $50. And let's uh, mark it up on cost. Uh, 40%. Okay. Okay, so for this one right here, C, M, S. Okay, so the percent of markup is based on cost, so I'm going to make cost 100%. And make cost the base. And uh, the selling price is $50. And the percent of markup on cost is 40%. Okay, I'm going to go to the first place that I can add or take the difference. And in this particular case, it's on the left-hand side. So I'm going to add 100 to 40 to give me 140%. Make that the rate since I'm on the left-hand side and go straight across. Make this a part. So this time I'm going to be solving for the base. Base is equal to part divided by rate. So the part is $50. And the rate is 1.4 after I move the decimal point two places to the left. So 50 divided by 1.4 is equal to 35.71%. Uh, I'm sorry, 30, that's his dollar amount. $35 and 71 cents. Okay, then just to go ahead and um, fill in the rest to find out what the markup is, I'm just going to subtract the 3571 from the uh, $50, and that will give me the markup of 1429 just to fill in the rest of the bank blanks. Okay. So remember the part and the rate always go in the same row and the base is on a row by itself associated with uh, with the cost of 100%. Um, I went to the first place I could add or take the difference so I came up with 140% and went straight across and, and the selling price became my part. So base is what I'm solving for. Base is equal to part divided by rate so that's 50 divided by 1.4 and that gives me 3571. That was the original cost of uh, this particular item. The difference between the cost and the selling price is how much I marked it up of $14.29. Okay, now I'm going to take a look at uh, something from a completely uh, different perspective. Many retailers mark up their goods on selling price since sales information is easier to get than cost information. These retailers uh, use uh, retail prices in their inventory and report their expenses as a percent of sales. For the markup based on selling price, the base is always the selling price of 100%. So businesses that mark up their goods on selling price recognize that selling price is 100%. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of uh, these items. And the first item, go ahead and scroll that up just a little bit. And uh, my first item is... I have a, a hooded fleece uh, jacket for $18. That was a cost. And um, the selling price of that jacket is $23. Okay, those are the two assumptions I'm gonna make. And um, on this particular problem, the percent of markup is based on selling price. So here's what we have. Here's the CMS formula. Again, cost plus markup is equal to selling price. Since this particular problem is being based upon selling price, I'm going to make selling price 100%, which makes the selling price the base. That's opposite of what I did earlier. With this very same problem, percent of markup was based upon cost, 
So I made cost 100% and cost become the base. Now the same problem is transitioning to where the selling price is 100% since the percent of markup is based upon selling price and the selling price is the base. The cost is still $18 and the cost is still 23 or the selling price is still $23. I didn't do anything different as far as positioning the cost and the selling price. The only thing I changed is the location of the 100% and made it the base instead of the cost. Okay, now to calculate this one, I want to go to the first place that I can add or take the difference. And the difference between $18 and $23 is still a $5 markup. Since that was the first place that I could add or take the difference, I'm going to make that the part. Go straight across and make this the rate. The rate, remember, is always on the left, and the part in the base is always on the right. Rate and part are always on the same line. So I have a value in the base. I have a value for the part. So I'm looking for rate. Rate is equal to part divided by base. So part is $5 divided by the base of $23. And this is going to give us a percent of markup based upon uh, selling price. So 5 divided by 23 equals uh, 0.2173913. I'm going to move the decimal point two places to the right. And I'm going to make that 21.74%. Uh, Okay, just to fill in the blanks, the difference between 100% and 21.74 is 78.26. Remember, the rate is always on the left, so percentage is on the left of the CMS. So the cost of $18 plus the markup of $5 gives us the selling price of $23. When the percent of markup is based on selling price, the percent of markup is 21.74%. Okay, now let's look at the next one. And uh, this is a lamp and it cost $100. And the percent of markup on selling price is 65 percent. Okay, that's what I have to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to build my calculation. And the percent of markup is based on selling price, so I'm going to put 100 percent right here at the selling price and make it the base. And the cost is $100. And the percent of markup on selling price is 65%. Okay, now with this in mind, I'm going to go to the first place that I can add or take the difference. And the difference between 100 and 65 is 35. So make 35% right here, and I'll make that the rate. I'm going to go straight across, and I'm going to make this a part, and I'm solving for base. Base is equal to part divided by rate. I want to find out what the selling price is. So the part's $100 divided by the rate of 0.35 whenever I move that decimal point two places to the left. So 100 divided by 0.35, that equals $285.71. Okay. Um, then the difference between 100 and 285.71 is um, 185.
and 71 cents. There we go. Okay. So I just filled in the blanks on the tic-tac-toe. And what I found out here, when the percent of markup is 65% for the lamp that originally cost $100, it will sell for $285.71 after the markup of $185.71. Okay, now let's look at a third scenario. In this third scenario, is we have the selling price of an item of $50 and the percent of markup on selling price is 40%. Okay, we have our key. We're ready to do our calculation now. Since the percent of markup is based on selling price, I'm going to make selling price 100% and make selling price the base. And then the selling price is $50. And the percent of markup on selling price is 40%. Okay. I'm going to go to the first place that I can add or take the difference. And the difference between 140 is 60%. I'm going to make that the rate since I'm on the left side and go straight across and make this a part. Again, I'm so, this time I'm solving for the part, which is equal to the base times the rate. And the base is 50 times the rate of 0.6 is 30. And then the difference between 30 and 50 is $20. So uh, with a markup of $20, my original cost was $30. And the percent of markup on selling price is 40%. Okay, uh, let's see. Alrighty, this is what I'm looking for. I thought, okay, not finding my item. Okay, this is from the handout um, that is located within your learning management system, several pages um, of this particular document. I want to get to chapter eight. And this will summarize what we talked about so far. When you have a percent of markup based on, on cost, the um, complete the grid with the values that you have available. should have um, three values assigned before you continue. The rate will appear on the left-hand side where the percentages are given. The base and the part will appear on the right side where the um, dollar values are given. You'll go to the first place that you can add or take the difference. Assign either the part or the rate to the location where you can add or take the difference. Rate on the left hand side and part on the right hand side. Depending on which uh, column is assessed, the part and the rate will appear on the same row whereas the base will appear on, a, uh, on this, its own row and that's where the cost will be located and the base will be located in the right column. The base is 100% of the cost. Then if the percent of markup is based on selling price, just flip flop it and the percent of markup is based upon the selling price and make selling price 100% and then the selling price becomes the base. Um, same thing situation for calculating. You'll go to the first place that you can add or take the difference. The rates will be on the left and the parts will be on the right. Always make sure that the part and the rate are on the same line and the base 
is on a line all to its own. Okay, sometimes uh, you may have to um, uh, look at something and determine, do I want to use a percent of uh, markup based upon cost or do I want to uh, find out what the percent of markup on selling price would be. What would the conversion be if I were looking at something, if I if I knew that the percent of um, markup on, on cost was, in this particular case, 12.4%. Okay, I want to try to make this really, really simple here. Two reminders when you're doing this. Cost plus markup is always equal to selling price. Selling price minus your markup is always equal to your cost. The percent of markup on selling price is always less than the percent of markup on cost. So what is the percent of markup on selling price if the percent of markup on cost is 12.4%? Okay, I'm going to draw something right here really quickly. Okay, if the percent of markup uh, on um, cost is 100%, cost is your base, and the percent of markup on cost is 12.4%. Okay, look at this particular area right here. You're getting, the formula will be 12.4% divided by 100 plus 12.4%. So now if you come back over here and look at this, you'll say, oh, okay, cost plus markup is equal to selling price. So it's actually going to be the percent of markup on cost of 12.4% divided by 100 plus 12.4%. So it's 1124 as illustrated right there. Then move the decimal point two places to the left. And that will equal this column. And you'll actually calculate on your calculator 0.124 divided by 1.124. Press the enter key and the answer will be 0.11. Move the decimal point two places to the right to establish it as a percent. And it becomes 11%. So if you have a problem and you uh, recognize that the percent of markup on cost is 12.4%. You can run this simple formula right here to say, well, the equivalent percent of markup on selling price would be 11%. So that could help you make certain types of decisions. Okay, you could also go the opposite direction with this as well. Okay, to do that, two reminders. Remember, selling price minus markup is equal to cost. Let me go ahead and put that uh, formula back in here again. And uh, whenever you know the percent of markup on selling price, selling price is 100%. And selling price is the base. So selling price, mi selling price minus your markup is equal to your cost. Okay, so uh, now the same type of situation. Your percent of markup on selling price is 11%. Selling price plus... Selling price minus your markup is equal to your cost. So I'm going to subtract 11% from 100 to give me 89% under 11%. So the percent of markup on selling price is 11% divided by the percent of markup on selling price of 89%. Then move the decimal point two places to the left. And that gives you 0.11 divided by 0.89. That equals 0.1235, and if you um, round that to the nearest tenth percent, that'd be 12.4%. So if you know that you have a problem where the percent of markup on selling price is 11%, the equivalent percent of markup on cost would be 12.4%. So again, on the previous problem, cost plus markup is equal to selling price, and by the same type token, selling price minus markup is equal to cost. Uh, so you can make that conversion just with a simple formula. Okay, some other things to consider in this particular chapter are markdowns. Um, how do you find the reduced price? First, you subtract your, uh, your markdown. Um, let's say that it's 30%. 
So therefore, 30% uh, percent of uh, $58 is $17.40. Subtract out your markdown or your markdown dollars, how much it's going to, uh, how much you're going to reduce it. Subtract that from the original cost, and that will give you the reduced cost of forty dollars and sixty cents. Okay, that makes sense. How do you find the markdown amount? Well, that's the original price. Subtract from that the reduced price, and that will give you the markdown amount. So if you have an item that's fourteen eighty less a reduced price of um, seven hundred fifty dollars. The amount of your markdown is $730. Again, that makes sense. So one that's a little bit more complicated, but not much, is to how do you find the percent of your markdown on something? So you subtract from your original price, reduced price, and that will equal your markdown uh, amount, and that will become your part, and your base is the original cost. So in this particular case, we have the original price of something of $785. Uh, we're going to subtract out the reduced price, what the new cost is on something, of uh, $530. And uh, the difference is $255. That's a markdown amount. So rate is equal to part divided by base. So part is $255 divided by base of $785. That gives you 0.32 for the rate, or 32% after you move the decimal point two places to the right. The 32% markdown is what you uh, have on this particular problem. Now, if you know what the selling price is, but you don't know what the original price is, you've got the reduced price of $18, and you know that it was a markdown from the original price of 40%. What was the original cost? Remember, that to which something is being compared is your base, so we're going to be solving for the base. The base is equal to the part what the new cost is of uh, $18 divided by the rate. Now, we, um, we marked it down 40%, but that 18, uh, the $18 is representative of 60% 60, 60 or the complement of 40% to find the original price since the original price is 100%. So 100 minus 40 gives you 60%. Base is equal to part divided by rate, so it's 18 divided by 0.6. After moving your decimal point two places left, that'll give you uh, $30 for the original cost. Okay, and then the, uh, the upcoming, um, uh, this is a formula sheet where you can work out some of the problems at the end of the chapter. Okay, some other uh, concepts in this particular chapter is uh, break-even analysis. So far in the, cha uh, the chapter, the cost is the price retailers pay to a manufacturer or a supplier to bring the goods into the store. In this unit, we uh, view costs from the perspective of manufacturers or suppliers who produce goods to sell in units, such as polo shirts, pens, calculators, lamps, and so on. These manufacturers or suppliers deal with two costs, a fixed cost and a variable cost. Uh, to understand how the owners of manufacturers or suppliers that produce goods per unit operate their businesses, we must understand that fixed costs and variable costs and also what a uh, contribution margin is and a break-even point is. So the definitions, a fixed cost is a cost that never changes. It does not change. It may change, but they do not change with increases or decreases in sales. They include payments for insurance, a business license, rent, a lease, utilities, labor, and so on. Variable costs, they do change in response to changes in the volumes and sales. They include payments for materials, some labor, and, and so on. The selling price in this unit, we focus on manufacturers and suppliers who produce goods to sell in units. And then the contribution margin, that's the difference between the selling price and variable costs. This difference goes first to pay off total fixed costs when they are uh, covered and uh, profits or losses start to accumulate. The break-even point, that's a point at which the seller has covered all expenses and costs of a unit and has not made any profit or suff suffered any loss. Every unit sold after the break-even point will bring some profit or cause a loss. Okay, so calculating a, um, uh, a contribution margin
a contribution margin. This is equal to the selling price minus the variable cost. And that will give you the contribu uh, contribution margin. So assume that Jones Company produces uh, pens that have a selling price of $2 and a variable cost of $0.80. Cents. We calculate the contribution margin as follows. Subtract the various costs from the um, selling price. And that will give us a contribution margin of $1.20. This means that each pin sold, $1.20 goes to cover the fixed costs and results in a profit. It makes sense to cover fixed costs first because the nature of the fixed cost is that it does not change with increases or decreases in sales. Okay, so now we're uh, ready to see how Jones Company will reach a break-even point. Okay, um, break-even point. Sellers like Jones Company can calculate their profits or losses by using a concept ca called the uh, break-even point. This important uh, point results after sellers have paid all their expenses and costs. So the break-even point is equal to the fixed costs divided by the contribution margin. So if Jones Company still produces pens, the company has a fixed cost of uh, $60,000. Each pen sells for $2 with a variable cost of $0.80 cents a pen. So the selling price per pen is uh, $2. So I'll put that right here, $2 minus uh, the $0.80. Cents. Gives me the contributing... Um, margin, the contribution margin of $1.20. So I'm going to use $1.20, the contribution margin. And so that gives me a break-even point of 50,000 units. 60,000 divided by $1.20 gives me a break-even uh, point of 50, excuse me, 50,000 units. Okay, what that means is that we have to sell 50,000 units before we even begin to make a profit. That is a break-even point. We have to, that helps me make a decision on whether I, maybe I need to increase costs for something because I'm going to have to sell 50,000 of these before I even start to make any type of a profit. Okay, this concludes Chapter 8.